All right, welcome back. Let's start with this one right here. We have the derivative of pi. So now pi is just a constant, right? It's equal to 3.1415 and you could keep on going with that. So it's not a variable. And so we know that the derivative of a constant is always equal to zero. So in this case, this derivative is just zero. But now let's look at the derivative of pi squared. This one sometimes tricks people because they see that squared and they automatically think, oh, power rule, I gotta use the power rule. But you don't use the power rule here because this isn't a variable, it's a constant. Pi squared is just some number, right? It's like 9.8 something. It's not a variable of any kind. And so while it might be tempting to write that this is equal to two pi, don't do that because it's a constant. So the derivative is just going to be zero like it was when pi was not squared. So in either case, whether it's pi or pi squared, it's still a constant, so the derivative is still zero. So now let's look at this example. We have the function y equals x to the fifth power, and we wanna find y prime, which would be the derivative of y. So we're gonna be looking at all our different notations for derivatives here. So this is our first one here. We've got y defined with a function of x, and then we're gonna find y prime. And this is just gonna be a power rule, right? We have x to the fifth power, or we have an exponent of five. And so now if we take y prime, or the derivative of this, we're going to have that exponent multiplied by x, so five times x, and we're going to subtract one from that exponent. So we'll have five minus one. And then if we simplify this, we will have five times x to the fourth power. And so this would be y prime in this case, or our derivative of x to the fifth power, just five x to the fourth. So then if we look at the function one over x cubed, and we wanna find the derivative of that, which would be f prime of x in this case, because our function is defined with this function notation, f of x. So then our derivative, when we find it, is going to be denoted with this notation. But first, let's rewrite our function so that we can use our power rule a little better, because I do see that we have an exponent down here, but I don't like having it in the denominator. So let's bring this to the top by giving this x a negative exponent of negative three. So we're gonna rewrite this as f of x equals x to the negative third power, and now we can use our power rule. So f prime of x, or the derivative of the function, is going to be equal to that negative three multiplied by x, right? We took the exponent and we're multiplying it by our variable, and then we subtract one from our exponent, so negative three minus one. And this is going to be equal to negative three times x to the negative fourth power, which we can then move that negative exponent back into the denominator to get our final answer of negative three divided by x to the fourth. And so that would be the derivative, or f prime of x, for this function. Next, let's look at the derivative in terms of y for the function y plus six. So this one should be a little easier. Remember with our sum and difference rule that when we have two functions, y and six in this case, being added or subtracted together, that we can just take the derivative of each of these parts and add them together. Or if it was subtraction, take their difference. But in this case, it's addition. So we'll say that this is equal to the derivative of y, which we know is going to be one because the derivative of just a variable to the first power is going to be one. Remember, because we technically have a exponent of one right here, so we would have one times y to the one minus one power because we'd be subtracting one from our exponent of one, which is going to give us an exponent of zero and anything to the zeroth power is just one. So we'll get around to simplifying that then. But then let's look at our six. We know that the derivative of a constant such as pi or seven is just zero. So the derivative of six, a constant is zero. So we add that to zero. So then we can simplify we know that this is going to be one because y to the zeroth power is one multiplied by one is still one. And then for adding zero, it's not gonna change this one in any way. So our answer is one. That is going to be the derivative of this function with respect to y. So now let's look at this example. We have the derivative with respect to z of z to the two thirds power. So we've already got an exponent. So I think we're gonna be using the power rule here. So let's do that. So this is going to be equal to two thirds, remember our exponent times the variable z to the two thirds minus one power. We're subtracting one from our exponent. Then this will be equal to two thirds times z 
and now 2 thirds minus 1 is going to be negative 1 third, so we'll have negative 1 third, and then we can move that negative exponent into our denominator to have a positive exponent, so then we're going to have 2 over 3 times z to the 1 third power. Now you could also rewrite this to be the cubed root of z, but I'm going to keep it in this form because this is acceptable as an answer. So this would be the derivative of z to the 2 thirds with respect to z. Next, let's look at the function y equals 4 times the square root of x plus 9x squared, and we're going to be finding the derivative of that in this notation, dy dx, which means that we're taking a derivative of y with respect to x. So let's do that. First, let's rewrite our function because I see we have a square root right here, and we know that we can rewrite a square root as taking something to the power of 1 half. So we'll write that y is actually equal to 4 times x to the 1 half power, and then just add that 9x squared, because that's not going to change at all. We don't need to rewrite that in any way. So all we did here is change the square root of x to x to the 1 half power because that's going to be the same thing, but now we can use our power rule and we'll know what our exponent is more easily. So then dy dx is going to be equal to four times this one half times x to the one half power minus one. So what we did here is we remember our constant multiple rule that says that when we have a constant in front of a function, we can just multiply that constant by the derivative of that function. So we can just keep that four here and multiply it by our derivative of x to the one half power. So we took our exponent, we multiplied it by x, and then we subtracted one from our exponent. Then we can add it to this term using our sum property by saying that the derivative is equal to this term plus nine times the exponent two times a variable x to the power of two minus one. We multiplied by our exponent two, and then we subtracted one from that exponent. So now let's simplify. This is going to be equal to four times one half, which is two times x to one half minus one, which is negative one half, plus nine times two, which is 18, times x to two minus one power, which is one, which we don't actually need to write. So now we can simplify one more time and we can move this negative exponent with this x term to the denominator to have it be positive. And then we will have two over x to the one half power plus 18x. And then we can actually rewrite this one more time. We can change this x to the one half power back to a square root. So this would be equal to two over the square root of x plus 18x, and that would be our derivative of this function. So for our next derivative, we have this one, which looks a little spooky because so far we've only really been looking at variables like x, y, and z, but now we have a completely different look because we're using variables like s and t. And don't let this scare you. You can take a derivative of any variable with respect to any variable. So in this scenario, we wanna find the derivative of s with respect to t. And so we have a function s, which is defined with terms with the variable t in them. So we can go ahead and take a derivative of this, just like we would if this was defined with y and x. It's no different, we just have different letters as our variables. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just look at my function and I'll see that we have a nice variable to the first power. And then we have a variable in the denominator, so I'm gonna wanna move that up to the top so we'll have a negative exponent that I can actually take a derivative of much easier. So we'll rewrite our s function to be equal to pi times t plus eight times t to the negative first power. So now let's take our derivative. We'll have ds dt is equal to pi times one, the exponent of t, times t to one minus one, which would be its exponent minus one. And then we're going to add this to eight times the exponent of this term, which is negative one, times t to negative one minus one. Again, we just have the exponent minus one. So now we can simplify. This will be equal to pi times t to the zero power plus negative eight times t to the negative two power. So then we can simplify this even more and we know that anything to the zero power is one. So one times pi is going to be equal to pi. And now we're adding this negative eight terms so we can actually subtract this next term and then we're going to move our negative exponent back to the denominator so that it is positive. So this will be equal to eight over t squared. And this right here is our derivative for this function. 
So it doesn't matter what variables we have, whether it's x, y, or s and t, we're still going to be able to take a derivative of it. So do not let a function like this stump you, just treat it as you would any other variable. So in this case, we were able to find this derivative for this function. So now let's look at the derivative of the square root of x divided by x. This one's a little tricky because now, for the first time, we have a term with x's in the numerator and the denominator. And this seems tricky, but it's actually just all about redefining our function. So let's change it a little bit. How are we going to change this? Well, this is going to be equal to the derivative of x to the 1 half power divided by x because x to the 1 half power is the same thing as taking the square root. The square root means taking your variable to the 1 half power. And then we notice that we have an x in the denominator, which means it has a power of 1 that can be moved up to the top by changing it to a negative exponent. So now we can say that this is equal to the derivative of x to the 1 half power times x to the negative one power. And now we can use our algebra skills of multiplying two variables together and adding their powers or their exponents to simplify this even further. So this would actually be equal to the derivative of x to the negative one half power because one half plus negative one is negative one half. Right, because if I had x squared and I multiplied that by x cubed, I would add the exponents together to get x to the fifth. It's the same thing here. We're multiplying x to the one half times x to the negative first power, so we can add the exponents and get negative one half. So now we're ready to take our derivative. We've already taken derivatives of functions like this before. So all we have to do is multiply by our exponent, negative one half times x, and then subtract one from our exponent. So then we'll have that this is equal to negative one half times x, and then negative one half minus one is going to be negative three halves. So this will be negative three divided by two. And then we can move our negative exponent to the denominator to make it positive, and then we will have negative one divided by two times x to the three halves power. And this would be our derivative of this function. So while it seemed difficult at first because we had this square root of x over x, we can simplify it into an expression that we can take a derivative of with our power rule. So now for our final example, we're gonna be looking at the function g of x equals x times the quantity x plus three, and then we're going to be finding what the value of that derivative is at the point x equals three. So all this means here is find the derivative of our function g, and then find the value of that function at x equals three. So this function's a little bit different. We haven't seen this before where we have a variable times a quantity with another variable. Now we will actually learn a nice little rule for this later on in this course, but for now, the best way to go about this is to distribute this x into each part and then take the derivative of each of those terms. So let's rewrite this function as g of x is equal to x times x, so we'll have x squared, and then plus x times three, so we'll have three x. So now we have a nice function that we now know how to take the derivative of. We can use our sum property because we have two functions that we're adding together, and then we can use our power rule for each one of these parts of the function. So then we'll write that g prime, which would be the derivative of the function g, is equal to the exponent two times x, and then we subtract one from our exponent, plus three. Because remember, if we have a constant in front of a variable to the first power, the derivative of that is just going to be that constant because we'd have three times one, the exponent of that x, times x to the one minus one power, which is the zeroth power. And so this just becomes one. So then we'd have three times one times one, which is equal to three. So in every case where you have a constant times a variable to the first power, the derivative is just going to be that constant. So then let's simplify this right here, and then we'll have that the derivative equals two times x to the first power plus three, and we actually don't even need that first power right there because x by itself means the first power. So then there is our derivative of that function. So then we need to find the value of that derivative at x equals three. So now we'll write g prime of three is equal to plugging three into this function right here. So we have two times three, plus three, and that's going to be equal to six plus three, and that's going to be equal to nine. So we just plugged in that value into our x of our derivative. 
All right, so hopefully all these examples helped you to understand how to better take derivatives using some of those simple derivative rules. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.